Hi, my name is Abby May and I live in Stoke-on-Trent and I'm a mother of two beautiful children who very sadly have both died. I was 25 when my little boy Pax died, um, he was three, he had a genetic condition and beautiful Catherine died when she was age 30 and that was in 2011 and um, I've lost other people in my life. I, I'm, I'm, at this point in my life, I've lost my parents, I've lost both of my brothers, but it was the loss of my children that really changed my life completely. When Dylan or Pax died, I was only 25, and I was just kind of starting out on life, and I really didn't know how to handle my grief. And um, at the time, I really didn't understand grief, and I didn't have very much support. So basically, I took my grief and I suppressed it, I pushed it deep, deep, deep inside. When Catherine died, and that was, um, I've only had two children, so this was the second of my children. When Catherine died, I had no control over the grief. It just exploded out of me. But this time I actually handled it quite differently. Instead of holding it in, which I couldn't do, I reached out to other people. And that's one of the big differences. I reached out to people that would listen to me and that could support me and help me understand what I was going through so that I wouldn't feel so alone and that could give me some hope that it was actually possible to survive this because to be honest when Catherine died I didn't even know if I was going to survive and I didn't even know if I wanted to survive. After Catherine died I went on quite a journey emotionally, psychologically and in every way. My life changed. I'd been teaching at the local college. I stopped work. I couldn't work. I needed to find a way to survive this and um, really fundamental loss of both of my children. So one thing I did was I started writing, writing my feelings. I ended up publishing a book. Mostly it was my feelings, but then talking with other people, I went for counselling, which I'd never done in my life before. That really made a big difference. It helped me express myself in a safe place. Basically what I started to do was expand my life so that my grief wasn't completely filling it. And part of that was um, reaching out and helping other people and basically it's been 12 and a half years since Catherine died and in those years I've um, opened up my own grief support project called Living With Loss and I find that in helping other people I'm also supported. My husband John was not the children's father, they were the stepfather and it was really hard for him to see me going through such extreme grief and I was really in a very very low place so that was really hard for him but he was very patient and very kind so I say I always say with grief in general if your friends and your family can be understanding and patient and kind it gives you a safe space to grieve and then in time your grief isn't so overwhelming. I'd like to tell you about some of the things I've learned in my grief journey both through training, through experience, my own personal experience and working with a lot of other people. And one is that people have this idea that grief follows this really nice linear path. So you start off here with this stage of denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. And then you just travel on this nice straight line and reach this nice comfortable place at the end. But grief isn't like that. Grief is a lot more messy. This is another way of illustrating grief. Every strand in this very messy ball represents another feeling, the feeling of anger, the feeling of sadness, depression, I can't sleep, I'm eating too much, maybe I've had a bit too much to drink, maybe I'm not drinking enough, maybe I'm not eating enough, maybe I'm angry with people, maybe I've got so many unanswered questions. There's so many loose threads and so many knots. Grief is like this and everybody's experience of grief is in some way unique. And everybody's experience of grief is also different with every subsequent grief in their life. As we go through life, we lose different people. I lost my children and they were really big in my life. They took a really big place in my life. So their absence has left a really, really big gap. And this will be the same for other people. If someone has lost their partner, their spouse, it's someone that they share their life with. It leaves a really big gap. Sometimes we lose other people that it doesn't affect us so much, so we never really know how we're going to feel until we go through that grief. 
Instead of looking at grief as being a straight line, this is another way of understanding it. If you imagine that this is your grief, there's another ball here. And imagine that this container represents your life. When you're first bereaved, then grief completely fills your life. It's all you can think about. There's that moment when you leave the hospital and you wonder, why is the rest of the world still carrying on? There's that moment when you wake up in the morning and think, is it real? Did this really happen? Everything is about your grief and you're, so, you're often very busy with your grief because when you're first bereaved, there's usually a lot of things to do. You have to inform people. You have to arrange a funeral. There's so much going on. You go shopping and someone says, oh, how's Joe? And you have to say, I'm really sorry to tell you that Joe has died. And every time you go out, you're hit again by the absence of this person. But if you carry on, if you carry on and speak with people, if you have a chance to express your feelings and you start doing other things, it's like your life starts to grow. So you start to make adjustments. Perhaps you do go out with a friend for coffee. Maybe you do read a book. Maybe you do put the TV back on. Your life becomes not only about the grief, but your life has grown around it. So it's not completely consuming you. And then the goal is that eventually you come to this place, the biggest container, where this is your life. And your life, you're carrying, you're living the best life you can without this person who was so important to you. You're doing things to remember them, but it's not all you're doing. You're also living your own life. And you see that your life has grown. You're no longer consumed with your grief. But the thing that's changed is your life. Your grief is still there. The people we love, we'll always love, and they'll always have a place in our lives. One thing that I found very helpful, and a lot of people in their grief do, is finding ways to remember their loved one, to keep their loved one's memory alive. And my son's name was Pax, which means peace. And I found a candlestick that actually has Pax engraved on it. So that's just a little thing. I did a charity walk. I went on this Camino pilgrimage, raising funds for a charity, but I did it in memory of Pax and Catherine. A lot of people do little things like keeping a pictures by their bedside. They might make a website. They might keep posting on social media about their loved one. They might do bigger things. They might have a bench with a plaque. They might go visit places that are very important in their grief journey and their loved one's life journey. Some of these things, other people might not always understand why you're doing them. It's like keeping clothes. I have a, um, a cupboard with some of Catherine's clothes in and I have a jacket and take it out after 12 years and it still, um, still reminds me of Catherine. I can give that jacket a hug. Some people make teddy bears out of their loved one's clothes. So these things, we, they might be private and they might be things that we incorporate with our family, but they help us keep the memory alive and it's one of the ways that we can cope with grief. I know when I was first bereaved, I just could not see a future. I couldn't see how I was going to survive this. But there was a future, there is still a future. And I think, especially when you've lost someone in a very traumatic way, and it's worth mentioning here that my daughter Catherine was a lovely young woman. She was kind, she was generous, she was funny, amazing sense of humor, great cook, but she was also quite um, troubled and she died by suicide. When someone has died um, in a traumatic way, or a very sudden way, you don't get to say the goodbyes that you really needed. And if you've been bereaved in this way, I think it's really extra important to find support and to find other people you can speak with who will understand what you're going through. But I would say whatever grief you're going through, when you've lost someone profound in your life, it's not going to be a straight line. It's not going to be like this. You're not going to just travel through these nice, neat stages. It's going to be more of a roller coaster. It's going to be messier. So don't try and do it all alone. Try and find people who will support you, whether it's other people who are bereaved, or it's professional counselors, or it could be good friends, or it could be family members. We have to say that not all friends and family kind of get grief. People grieve in different ways, and that's why sometimes looking outside of your normal social circle can be helpful.